All right, and if we talk about the Pat Metheny band, I think we should talk about Lyle Mays. We lost Lyle uh, a few days ago. And since you recorded a couple of albums with him and you were on the road with him for a while, you know, 300 days a year, maybe you can say a few things about Lyle Mays. You know, something about his tremendous musical gifts, something about him just as a person, maybe there's a story or two. Now, while you think about that, let me share the one Lyle Mays story that I have. And he was a piano player with the Woody Herman Band. And one night, they played at my high school. And what I remember is earlier in the day, Lyle was at the piano. I, I guess I walked into this. And he was given kind of an impromptu clinic. And what I most remember was him sitting there and, and playing changes and saying, this is how Bud would play it, and this is how Chick would play it, and this is how Bill Evans would play it, and, and, and so on. You know, and I came away from that knowing that I just saw, probably for the first time, a seriously talented jazz player in person. You know, and, and, and I've held that experience in my head whenever I think about really knowing the music vocabulary. Do I really know it? You know, do I really know the distinctions in great players? Anyway, it, that made a huge impression on me. And that's what Lyle meant personally to me from, from a long time ago. So I guess, you know, maybe share your perspective on that, maybe any stories that, that come to mind about, uh, about Lyle. Yes, it was uh, very sad news to hear about Lyle. Um, most of the time that I spent with Lyle was during the Pat Metheny group. We were in touch, but I didn't see him that much after I left the group in 1980. So, um, but having played together for four years, 300 days a year, we were in close contact. And Lyle was always, Lyle was a genius. And I use that term very rarely, you know, and he really was a genius. And just in this, how he, at that clinic, you said that he showed people you could play Bill Evans, or you could sell like, you know, Chick Career or Miles, or uh, whoever, Herbie Hancock. He was a, an incredible student of, of music and of jazz and he was very driven and not only in his um, piano study but also in his compositional study and he even wrote for North Texas State for the big band before he um, went on to play with the Pat Metheny group and Woody Herman's band um, uh, but Lyle was Lyle was very serious and he was very always studying and always a student of the music and but not only music he would be studying architecture on the road and studying train layouts you know whatever he did he did it to the fullest i've never seen anyone that quite had that type of burning energy you know if he played foosball he was a he was a champion um pool player he studied pool and he was one of the top 16 in the world i think danny Gottlieb told me he was he was heavy whatever he did he played he was he juggled he used to juggle when we do sound checks or be, you know waiting for the sound check we'd be juggling three or four balls and you know he he was that type of person he was the most driven person in a good way um about really really getting to the center of things and finding out every aspect of it and mastering it. And when Lyle applied himself to Pat Metheny's music and to Lyle and Pat's music into orchestrating, Lyle created a whole backdrop for the Pat Metheny group that really made that sound of that band. I mean, you had the components of Pat's great sound was his, his touch, first of all, his guitar touch, the sound that he got with his digital delays and his stereo imaging, um, and just Lyle, his Pat's touch, but then Lyle, the way that he orchestrated around it and came up with parts, and you can, it's well documented on YouTube and videos and on the records, but when you see him <laughs> on the on these concerts, you know, he's playing three or four parts, you have the Oberheim synthesizers going back and forth between the grand piano and the auto harp and another synthesizer and he's just his mind was just wired to he was a real genius and 
one of the nicest people you'd ever know, you could ever meet. You know, he was very compassionate. Um, so, you know, he'll be missed. And like I said, I wasn't in touch with him that much since I left the band, but I always felt close to him. And I was, I feel real fortunate that I was able to be in his presence and learn so much from him because he, um, he taught me a lot about harmony and, and rhythm and melody and just by example, by what he did in that band. Because uh, for instance, the beginning line of San Lorenzo, that he wrote that, you know, and I played it on the record, recorded it and doubled it. You know, it's two on the intro that's doubled uh, twice doubled once one double uh but so you know he'll be missed his music lives on and his spirit lives on like all other musicians and great artists that we know you know thankfully there's they've left that uh, in their tracks you know for us to follow so really fortunate to be around him and you know when when danny gottlieb had called me when he had heard about it and so we have been in touch a lot because we were in that original band together Danny went on to play a few more years after I left the band, but, um, you know, talking about all the times and he brought up a lot of great stories that I had forgotten about with Lyle and vice versa with me and uh, just very, very, uh, very evolved person. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That was a, that was a beautiful tribute to him. He will sure. be missed. <laughs>